for the first time in forever. This sentence actually means something. I think the last time there was a substantial difference between Pokemon game trailers was... God, I don't, I don't even know, X and Y? It, it's, it's been a very long time. And I'm just gonna be real here for a moment. I'm so burnt out on the Pokemon franchise right now that I don't even want to talk about the trailers. I just want to talk about the games once they actually release, which is one of the reasons I haven't made a video on it for a while. And to be honest, I don't really think anything that I say would really offer any new insight onto what other people have already said. I'm not offering anything new here with my words. To be honest, I'd rather sit here and talk about a game I actually enjoyed. A game whose first trailer absolutely disappointed me. A game that actually looks really, really good. Or how I've never been more excited for a movie in my entire life. But, at its core, this is a Pokemon channel, so I should talk about Pokemon stuff. So why don't we start with Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. The game obviously looks a whole lot better. Even if all they did was take what they had before, lighten the colors, add some mid-2000s Twilight Princess style blur and call it a day. I did this in Photoshop, and it looks identical to what we have now. Now, I will say this, full disclosure, full everything here, I'm still not a fan of the Chippy Overworld style. It's just not a style that I like the look of. I didn't even really care for it in a game like Link's Awakening, even though they obviously did it better. It's just not my cup of tea. But at least I can look at this and say, yeah, it has a level of polish to it now. The main thing that matters to me is how things look during battles, and everything in battles looks great now. Honestly, there's not too much I can complain about other than the field feels a little small, but that's kind of fitting, I guess. The underground stuff I'm actually kind of excited for. I mean, I spent countless hours as a kid just doing underground stuff, and it actually looks like they've expanded on the concept, which is great. I mean, you can actually catch things down there now, meaning that your fire-type options aren't just going to be limited to horse and monkey. And as someone who generally chooses Piplup, I'm pretty excited for that. Contests look okay. I mean, they're missing the whole dress-up portion, but I honestly didn't expect that to make it into this game anyway, so... No harm, no foul. I'm just at the very least happy they didn't just say, oh well, the dancing's too hard to program, so here's some Hoenn region style contests. They at least resemble the Center region contest from Diamond and Pearl, and that makes me happy. Contests are honestly the thing I was most worried about with this game. Ball capsules are back. That's great. Honestly, didn't really expect to see them back. I mean, I assume the letters are gonna be gone, but that's because you can't stop people from writing the fuck word, so, you know, it is what it is. Calling Pokemon Return, and that's cool. Although, due to the negative reception, I can't help but think, maybe it's just pandering? But, eh, I mean, it is what it is. I'm not going to complain about following Pokemon. Unless they end up like Sword and Shields, in which case, that's pretty bad. And that Piplup is running kind of slow, so I guess we'll see what happens. And there's actually some customization. It's a lot more basic than, say, Sword and Shield and X and Y, but it still looks pretty good. It's something Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire didn't have, so, you know... That's a good, that's a good, can't complain. Overall, there's really not much more to talk about. It looks like Diamond and Pearl at a higher resolution. Team Galactic showed up, that was good. It was a good trailer, I liked how they were introduced in it. If there's anything that I do still want to see from this game, it's the Poketch. We haven't seen anything on it yet, and I don't know how that's going to work with one screen. One final note on these games, we did get a look at the full Sinnoh region map, and the Battle Frontier is not in it, so... Yeah, that's... that sucks. So, let's move on to Arceus, and there is a lot to unpack here with this game. I mean, you've got a crafting system, you've got new battle mechanics, you've got catch mechanics, you've got freaking characters that we've already seen before, but they're different now. Characters we've already seen before, but they're woman. So, I mean, you know, there's, there's a lot going on here. So, let's kind of just take it slower with this one. Starting with the battle system. The battle system is interesting. It's still turn-based, but it's different than what we're used to in the Pokemon franchise, which means it's kind of something we're already used to, but it has a slight twist to it, which is something we are long overdue for. It seems simple in concept, but it's still something I'm trying to wrap my head around. It looks like it revolves more around a turn order. A turn order that actually matters in this game, I should say. Like, not in how standard games, it's like, oh, well, you go first, then I go. And then we repeat that until someone dies. No. It's more like, I will go, and then I will go again, and then you can go. It just kind of depends on which moves you want to use. So things like Swords Dance and Calm Mind, for example, they will give you an additional turn. So if you use Swords Dance, you can use an attack right after. I think. I think that's how that works. But I'm interested to see how it affects moves that affect speed, because this seems to be a speed-based sort of battle system. So, like, if you use agility, do you get more turns per the battle? Or what's going on with that? 
it's an interesting take on it, and I'm actually very excited to give it a shot. There's also a crafting system, which means you can actually make your own items this time, rather than just going to a store or waiting for someone else to do it for you. And the main thing that I really like about this is that the heavy ball was shown. So Game Freak, if there isn't a, like, old-timey lore ball in the game, I'm gonna be, like, super pissed. I clearly have my priorities straight. No, but in all seriousness, a crafting system and an open-world game go hand-in-hand. Hand. Like, you find things in the open world to make something that you can then use to better fight or traverse that open world. It's a no-brainer. It's one of the reasons Sword and Shield's open world system kind of failed, because there was nothing to really find throughout the world, and nothing to really put the small things you did find to good use. It was just, like, filler content. Now at this point you're probably thinking, you're getting way too excited over a crafting system, and you know what? You're probably right. But what it shows me is that there's actually something to do in this open world, and the things that I find actually go to a good use. That excites me, because the one fear that I really had with this game was that it was just going to be running around a big empty area, throwing balls at Pokemon. That doesn't sound fun to me, but this adds an extra layer of something, and that's good. At the end of the day, it shows me we're at least getting something with a little more thought put into it than Sword and Shield's open world areas. Speaking of the world, why don't we start talking about that now? It looks so much better than it did before, and actually runs at a stable frame rate. Now I'm gonna be real, it's not the prettiest game. In fact, it's still kinda ugly. Those shadows are still awful. The daytime lighting looks terrible. It looks good at night, but that's about it. And the texture work looks all muddy and just not that great. But it is still a noticeable improvement from the first trailer, which is something that I said they would probably do in my last video. But also, like I said, I'm going to try to stay cautiously optimistic about this game. And I hate to start pointing back at trees and saying, this is bad, but this looks bad. These trees, they suck. I mean, but that looks like it can mostly just be fixed with lighting. Just fix your lighting, please. Moving on from that, we have Hisuian form Pokemon. Right, the region isn't called Sinnoh in this game, it's called Hisui. Don't know why. Don't know why they didn't just call it Sinnoh, but okay. I mean, whatever works, it's just a name. Regardless, there's new regional forms and evolutions for this game, which is kind of weird considering it takes place in the past. You would think that these Pokemon would stick around in the Sinnoh region in the future, but they don't. Clearly, we've already played through Diamond and Pearl and none of these Pokemon existed. Braviary didn't even get concepted at that point. But still, it's interesting to see. It might be kind of interesting if they put a book in the Candlelave Library in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl that kind of explains where Pokemon like Basculesian and Weirdeer went, because those are entirely new species, and they're just extinct, basically. I'm not overly excited for Weirdeer. It just looks like a white Stantler, and I've never really liked Stantler to begin with, so that one is just gonna fall off to the wayside for me. Basculesian, though? That is metal as fuck. I mean, listen to this. Basculin that live in the Hisui region can evolve into this Pokemon if they become possessed by the restless souls of other Basculin in their school that have perished during their journey upstream. This Pokemon gains power from the souls possessing it, letting it swim on and on without tiring. What? So, like, in order for this one to exist, a ton of other Pokemon need to die for it. I'm sure another Pokemon has had a description like that, I think Spiritomb or something, but I mean, like, what the f- that's just, that's cool. It's not the kind of Pokemon I would personally want to sit on the back of and ride like a boat, but okay. Hisuian Growlithe exists. I don't really care for it. I'm interested to see Arcanine, but I don't really care for the Growlithe. Braviary, though. I'm already a huge Braviary fan, and this... I like. I like this one a lot. I'm definitely going to be using it. So far, those are the only four we've seen, and as far as my hopes for their future integration in the franchise or whatever, we'll get to that in a bit. I do need to make note of this Wurmple, though. There's something going on with it. It's got a yellow horn on the back. Normal Wurmples don't got that. Clearly has nothing to do with Beautifly, but maybe, just maybe, Clara will get her dust ox. As far as the characters themselves go, there's really not a whole lot to get into. I mean, we've seen three characters so far. Those being Professor Rowan, except he's not Professor Rowan. Cyrus, except she's not Cyrus. And Professor Laventon, who looks like I've seen him before. I feel like I recognize this design, 
but I just cannot pinpoint it. The main standout from these three is clearly Silene. It kind of makes me wonder what else they're going to do with other characters that have shown up. Like, are they going to gender bend Cynthia? Are they going to have an older version of Barry show up in this game? Are any of the gym leaders going to show up? I don't know. It's interesting what they're doing here. They're basically taking the same characters we've already seen and basically putting them through a Legend of Zelda filter where we recognize them, but they're also not quite the same person we already knew. Quite frankly, I dig it. The final thing that I can really touch up on right now is that Pokemon can actually damage you in the overworld rather than you hiding behind a party of six vibrantly colored animals. So I mean like, for the first time in forever, this sentence actually means something. Like in previous games, they never really felt like a huge threat. I mean, you'd occasionally get your whole Armageddon moments and all that. But that's about it. So this is a nice change of pace. The game actually looks really good. It looks like a lot of effort was put into it, and that's great. Now, does this mean the Game Freak actually cares now, and they're actually listening to what their fans think? <laughs> no. No, it doesn't. All this looks like to me is that there's actual time put into this, not a whole lot more caring or listening or anything like that but there's more time behind this project. And to be honest, given everything Sword and Shield has going for it, they really look like they just need a little more time to add a few more things to it anyway. The game didn't have the time it needed. This one does. On top of that, they're a corporation. And they don't care about you. They don't care about me. They don't care about anyone other than the paycheck in their pocket. They're a company. That's what they do. I, I mean, they, they literally do not need to care. Sword and Shield are some of the best-selling Pokemon games of all time, and there is just not a whole lot of passion put into those games. However, with that being said, that's where these two things differ. With Arceus, I can see, or at least I think I see, a level of passion shining through here. The game looks a lot better. It's still very rough around the edges, and I see new ideas, new concepts, new things that look fun and interesting that are coming through the woodwork. I'm seeing a level of passion, which, I mean, if anything, they care enough about this project. Ultimately, to kind of sum it all up, they care about what's going to make them money, and a good-looking Pokemon game is going to make them money. And if I'm wrong, and Game Freak are actually listening to what people are saying, they're listening to the criticism, they're taking it all into account, that's great, good for them, I'm glad to see them improving as a company. But I've been burned by them too many times at this point. So I have no faith in them that actually do that. And that may be a pretty pessimistic view, but I'm trying to be a realist here. Game Freak doesn't need to care. I mean, realistically speaking, we haven't even gotten our hands on this project yet. We have no idea whether or not it's going to be good, whether it's going to be bad. We can only speculate about it before its release. For all we know, this game could suck worse than Sword and Shield. Cautious optimism. That's all I'm saying. All of that being said, my bar for enjoyable open world games is incredibly low. I mean, the way I play open world games is that I pick a direction, I run into it, and I get distracted by every little shiny thing along the way. That's all there really is to it for me. It doesn't matter if that thing is just a new location, a generic resource dump, or even if it's just a good fight. As long as they can get that down right, I'll probably enjoy it. So that about does it for the main two things, but there is still one thing I do want to talk about, and that's Pokemon Home Support. Obviously these two games are going to support it, but I'm interested to see how they go about it. And by that I mean a game like Arceus, I don't expect you to be able to transfer Pokemon into it. I expect you to be able to transfer them out of it, but definitely not into it. Kind of like how Let's Go handles their transferring. I will say though, I do kind of hope that if you transfer Pokemon from Arceus, it retains the old tiny looking Pokeball, rather than just updating it to whatever the newest model is. I, I kind of like the wooden ones. I would like to see those stick around if you catch Pokemon in this game. Now Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, I don't know how they're going to handle it. I mean, what I would hope is that you could transfer Pokemon into it as long as they fit the regional decks. I don't expect a full Pokedex in this game. Just, at most, I'm expecting Platinum. They may have an expanded decks that includes Pokemon that are from Hisui, but we'll see. Honestly, I just want to transfer my Luxray in. It's one of the oldest Pokemon I own, and I've gotten a ton of ribbons on it. I would like to continue that. And if you look at the Sinnoh region map, the Pal Park is in there, which is weird because that revolved around transferring Pokemon from the Game Boy Advance games to the DS games. So maybe they're going to do something with that, because it's clearly right there. And with how Pokemon Home currently works, that doesn't make sense to re-include in the remake. And then we have Sword and Shield, which is still going to be the competitive hub. If they're going to keep Sword and Shield alive for another year at the very least, 
it would make sense to include the rest of the Pokémon and the new Pokémon that show up in Arceus. It's either that, or they risk competitive getting stale for the rest of the time Sword and Shield has. And if they wait till Generation 9, then Pokémon like the Hisuian forms won't have a place to shine. Sword and Shield getting a complete Pokédex makes the most sense. I doubt Mega Evolutions and Z-Moves are gonna return, but... at least we got Dynamaxing, right? Regardless, I'm not expecting anything like a full-blown DLC, I'm just expecting, like, a Pokemon update. But I think that should about do it. I don't think we're gonna get a whole lot more information on Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl before it releases, because, I mean, it's only like three months out. They're probably not gonna talk much more about it, other than maybe one, two new trailers. But I doubt they're really gonna be that in-depth. Arceus, on the other hand, we still don't know anything about the plot. Likewise, I'm sure there's still new features in there they haven't shown us about yet. And as far as the whole game footage not final thing goes, I'm pretty sure Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl are pretty much final at this point. Arceus, on the other hand, I am kind of looking forward to seeing if they can update a few things. Specifically, the lighting needs some work. And on that note, I'm out of things to talk about, so I'm going to go ahead and end it here. If you liked this video, be sure to leave a like, comment, sub, you know, the usual end of the video smooth jazz, and I'll see you in the next one. Later. Thank you.